here are some compression coax connectors we're going to put on the cable for you next. And the compression connector, as uh, the name implies, the tool is going to compress the connector lengthwise together. So when we get done, the tool, the uh, connector is a little shorter than it normally was. So again, it's kind of compressed it. Now, the entire industry is going to the compression style. And part of the reasons for doing this is that the connector has some O-rings. There's an O-ring underneath the nut, so when we tighten it down, it seals the back end of the nut. Um, the back end of the connector should also be pretty much watertight when we get done with it. Uh, and the only thing that's not watertight is when you screw this to the mating half, and obviously if you don't crank them down, water can work its way down a thread. Now corrosion is a big problem. That's one of the reasons why the industry got rid of the standard old uh, crimp on F connector is because these connectors aren't sealed in any way and moisture can work its way in and out of here and cause corrosion problems on the center conductors and I'm talking really humidity problems here. And the other problem with the old F connector, the crimp on here, is the back end of the connector, uh, because it is not sealed in any form, can radiate energy coming in and out of it. And uh, the FCC actually mandates to the cable companies that their connector cannot leak too much energy into the air. And that's another reason why we've gone to the compression. Now, the connector we have in front of us here is called a, a universal RG6. It will work with RG6, it would work with quad shield, and it would also work with something called uh, tri shield and coax, which is a, co a coax with a foil, a braid, and an extra layer of foil, or quad is foil braid, of course, foil braid. Okay? Now, we normally do our, our normal two step strip on the coax, like we always do. We fold back the cable, uh, the braiding, I should say. And uh, we want to make sure that when we insert this in here, that again, the connector's all the way through there. So we want to push the connector on until that white dielectric ends up being even or flush with the front of the fitting like that. And we know now it's ready to be compressed. Now, the compression tool, there's a, a variety of these out of the market, but all these tools have like a little ram that moves up, uh, in and out as the, uh, the lever gets pushed down. And inside the tool, there are some markings inside of here. And there's a large mark right there in the middle there, and that tells me if I move, if I push the tool down, the, the, the lever down, the ram moves up, and it's even with that large mark right there. And that's indicating to me that the tool is ready to be used for any of the ideals uh, connectors. Uh, if you have to uh, use this tool on somebody else's connector, you might have to move this ram up and down, and you can adjust the depth of that ram if you're using somebody else's connector. And so the way we're going to load this in here, we're going to take the center conductor in the connect, in the, on the connector and it loads right into an opening in the front of this ram and then we simply drop the connector in and now the connector is loaded between the, the ram and the clips right there and we simply just squeeze the handles down and that drove the, it compressed the connector like we talked about and when we release the tool we can now remove the connector and there is a properly compressed F connector and um, the guys really, really love these, and one of those reasons they love them is because the connector, uh, to get it off, is pretty hard. You're going to basically break the coax trying to get it off, so here's another reason why they love these things. So there you go, a properly compressed F connector.